Welcome back to another BJC Pass Paper Review. Again, today we're going to review another L Science paper. And this L Science paper is a paper two. And this was from the year 2017. Again, before you start this examination, write your school number, write your candidate number, write your initials, and also write your surname. Please read through all the instructions before you start this examination. You should not open the booklet until you are told to do so. Again, follow all the directives given by the examiner. Now, let's jump into our first question. And the first question reads that the diagram shows an outline of the human body. And so let's go to see what they're asking us to do. And so the first part is option A. So on the diagram, draw, um, drawn above, draw the diaphragm in the correct position and label it. That's only a one mark. All right, so let's do some drawing right here. And so the diaphragm will separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. So right here, somewhere here, that's where your diaphragm will be. All right, and so let's just label this as the diaphragm, okay? All right, so let's label that. That is our diaphragm. All right, so great. Now, the next part question is said, the list shows some organs found in the human body. In the body outline, write the name of each organ labeled, um, listed, in the correct body cavity, all right? And so, um, so all of these, we're going to put them in the right cavity. So let's think about the air, the heart, the stomach, the brain, the liver, the lungs, and the kidney. So I'm going to go back up here and, and put them in. So remember the order, which, we, well, the order is not important. Is we're going to put them is important, right? So um, in, up to the head, you'll have the brain for sure. So the brain will be here. And you also will have the air, okay? So those will be on that section. And then in the thoracic cavity, you'll have the heart. So you're going to have the heart. The heart is one. And you're also going to have the lungs. So the lungs will also be in this um, cavity as well. And then we have um, three more. We have the kidney. So the kidney will be here. So let's put the kidney uh -oh, right there. The kidney will be here. Um, the liver will also be here as well. I'm make, matter of fact, let me just put one long line going across. So the liver, I'm going to go straight across with them. The liver, but let's bear in mind. Okay, I could go down with the next one. Liver and the stomach, okay? All right. So they are all in the abdominal cavity. All right, so great. So we have all of them listed in the right cavity. All right, so let's go down to the next part of the question here now. Part B. Part B now states that the body is made up of 10 main organ system. You have 10 main organ systems. So write the name of the body system responsible for carrying out each function listed below. And so exchange, exchange of gases, that is the respiratory system, and that takes place in the alveoli of the lung. So this is respiratory, respiratory system. All right. And then transport materials. This is the circulatory system. The circulatory system and then coordinate body activities. This is a nervous system. All right, so those are the system that responds for these um, functions. Now, for part C, is that people living in countries where there is no overriding disaster, such as farming, can do much to keep themselves healthy. Define the term. Health. So what health means, and I'm going to state this. So health is a state. It is a state, and listen carefully, of mental, right, physical, and social well-being. Okay, that's what health is. Okay, so it's a state of physical mental, right, and social well-being. All right. A matter of fact, you cannot even put emotional on this as well, right? But these three recover everything. So mentally, you need to think in a, in a right state of mind is important. 
your, your body is physically okay and also socially well. And so if a person is always by themselves, not talking to persons, it therefore means at that point they're experiencing something that is not healthy. So it is not healthy to be socially deprived, right? Not talking to no one, not socializing. All right, I'm not saying go and socialize with everybody now and, and whatever it is and say it's healthy, you know, because that could also be unhealthy too. So the, the two extremes can be true if you socialize with the wrong persons on healthy for you because you're getting problems as well as if you do not socialize at all is also bad so there, there must be a balance in how you socialize right all right part d state two ways in which persons can keep themselves um keep themselves healthy and there's a number of different things we can list right here um and so let's start with um basic stuff like um uh, regular exercise. Let's say regular exercise, right? So if a person is um, exercising regular, regularly, yeah. So definitely, so regular exercise is one way. Um, besides exercise, what a person could do is eat a balanced diet. So I'm gonna put a number of them right here. Um, eating balance diet. All right. A person can also um, keep themselves healthy by adequate water, drinking adequate water. So I'm going to say drinking, okay, adequate water. All right, so make sure you drink the right amount of water per day. What a person can also do is to think positively. So I'm going to put that one in. I like this one. Think positively, always. All right, so thinking um posit positively all right so always always think try to think positively it help you mentally yeah you know take on stress do not think negatives all the time do not burden yourself with these negative thoughts just think positive appreciate what's around you that make you healthy i guarantee you you feel, you'll start smile more all right you feel better with yourselves and not only that but also this one oh my god this one is absolutely important and it's to maintaining, all right, good hygiene. Yes, so bathing every day, brushing our teeth is important in making us healthy. Because if you don't brush your teeth, the teeth are going to decay eventually, all right? And not only that, if you don't bathe and, and don't use a proper deodorant um, or cologne or spray, whatever you use, you're going to smell bad, all right? And you do not want that, all right? And of course, people will not be around you and all that, so it, that again, then again, you're going to affect your social well-being again because you, you, you will be deprived socially um, if nobody wants to come around you if you're not smelling so good. All right, so those are very important things. And there's just a num We can even talk about more things that could make us healthy, but those are basic stuff. All right, question number two. Now, it reads, let's go back a little bit more. It said the diagram below... The diagrams below show a drop of human blood seen under a microscope and a simple plan of the human circulatory system. All right, again, I'm going to talk about um, a, little, this is a small thing right here um, when I'm finished with this. And then, so you see diagram A, that's a drop of blood. And then diagram B is the, is definitely the plan of the body or the human body. All right, and so... Um, Let's quickly now talk about here. Let's go down a little bit more. So what the question is asking us. It said diagram A presents a drop of blood seen on the microscope, namely parts P and um, R. But why not label everything, yeah? Let's, let's go and label everything right now. So I'm going to just drop the front size a little bit to make the hole in that little space right there. So um, P is a phagocyte. It's a type of a white blood cell, a matter of fact, right? So this phagocyte, okay, just to make a note there. All right, and R is our red blood cells. So this is red blood cell, okay? All right, and then R here, so Q is a red blood cell. R will be platelets, okay? So that's platelets. And then S, if you notice there's nothing pointing to, that means the liquid part of the blood, and that is the plasma. All right, so great. And this big one right here with this nice nucleus, this is a lymphocyte. So I just want to label that. Lymphocytes, um, they have the regularly shaped 
uh, nucleus. So that's a lymphocyte. All right, so that's the labeling for that. And so they ask us here now for the names. Let's go down to the question. All right, and they said, name the parts, label P and R, as we already lab labeled them. So P here, it is the phagocyte. Okay, so P is a phagocyte. And this increases a little bit more. All right. So, yeah, this is phagocyte. All right, and R is the platelets. All right, so great. Now, um, part B, it says give the function of the part labeled Q and name the pigment it contains. And so let's go to Q, and Q again is red blood, um, yeah, Q is red blood cell. Okay, so let's talk about red blood cell right there. So Q is the red blood cell. So the function of red blood cell is to transport oxygen around the body, right? Okay, so to transport oxygen. All right, so let's just transport oxygen. Let's leave it as that. All right, okay, so transport oxygen around the body. All right, so the pigment that is contained, right, is called hemoglobin. So it is called hemoglobin. All right, so that's the pigment found in the red blood cell. And again, the, the, the red blood, the hemoglobin is made up of iron. Iron is very important to make hemoglobin. Please remember that. Now we said hemophilia. Hemophilia is an inherited blood disease. What function of blood is affected when a person has this disease? And if a person has hemophilia, it therefore means that the ability to clot blood is affected. Okay, so what functions affect is the ability to clot the blood. And so, especially after injury. So, if a person is hemophilic, it therefore means they will bleed, bleed, bleed once they get a cut, all right? All right, so good. Now, part D, it's a diagram B shows a simple plan of the circulatory system. Draw arrows on line R. S and T to show the direction of blood flow in these vessels. Now, the first and foremost, what I want to point out when you talk about direction of blood flow, always remember that blood will flow out of the ventricles, which are the lower chambers, and flow in the upper chambers. So if you're going to label these um, lines as blood flowing, blood always enters. So I'm going to make lines on these four. So blood always enters the upper chambers. And so this is also a chamber right here. So coming from R, it's going in. T is also going in. S is coming out because it leave blood leave from the lower chambers. So um, S is going up like that towards the lungs. All right. Um, U is already labeled. They already have this point here on it for us. Okay. So going down. Always remember that. Always blood always leave the lower chambers. And always enter the upper chambers. Always. Again, if you put the Avlov B that I showed you in the paper one, then you also realize it applies to this as well. All right. But let's go down to um, the other questions here. And for part D2, it said name the organ label Q in diagram B. So let's see what um, organ is Q in diagram B. All right. So now this is the key. This is labeled the digestive system. What organ receive blood coming from the digestive system, and that is the liver. The liver will receive the nutrients coming from the digestive system. The blood vessel that carries blood from the digestive system to the liver is called a hepatic portal vein. Okay, so it's called a hepatic portal vein. So this blood vessel right here, a matter of fact, let me leave it for you right now. So this blood vessel that carries substances from the digestive system to the liver is called hepatic portal vein. So just in case you need that, you know exactly what it is, right? So hepatic uh, portal, all right, portal vein. All right, so great. All right, so that is it. And so Q is the liver. So let's go into label Q, what Q is the liver. All right, so Q is the liver. And it's connected to the digestive system by the hepatic portal vein. Part three is that the heart is divided into a left side and the right side. What type of blood is normally found on the right side? 
Now again, the right side is where your left hand will be, right? So let's show you something in the diagram real quick. So it asks you for the right side. So the right side is where your left hand will be. Let me show you right real, real quick. So this side is the right side, right? So if the blood is going towards the lungs and coming from the body, then it therefore means that this side that I'm coloring in red right now must be deoxygenated blood, right? I should put it in blue um, to make it represent deoxygenated blood. But nevertheless, this side here that I'm shading, blood is leaving to go towards the lung. It therefore means that it's deoxygenated blood, but it's also coming from the body into this side, which means it's deoxygenated blood. So by two reasons there. All right. So great, let's put our deoxygenated blood and we finish. No, we're not finished with this question. And we have more parts to it. All right. So the, this is the um, oxygenated blood. Okay. All right. So that's the type of blood that is found on the right side. All right. It's a blood flows through the heart twice in one circulation. Right. It's a name and describe the type of circulation involved in blood vessel S and T. Okay, so blood vessel S and T. Let's talk about what is blood vessel S and T. Let's go to a diagram. Blood vessel S and T is coming to the lungs. So S is going to the lungs and T is coming back from the lungs. And so let's talk about that real quick. All right, and I'm, go I'm going to give you some extra information here as well. All right, because I think you want to need it just in case. And so... Once it's connected to the, to the lungs, it's called the pulmonary. So it's going to call um, the pulmonary circulation, okay? The pulmonary circulation. Now, to describe it, I'm going to give a little bit details first. I'm going to break it down into, into, into summary. I'm going to give you the other types of circulation too. So right here is that um, deoxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood uh, um, flows from the heart, okay, so it flows from the heart to the lungs, okay, to the lungs, all right, so it flows to the lungs, that's what exactly happened there, then, then oxygenated blood, all right, flows from the lungs into the heart, all right, all right, so, so that's what pulmonary circulation is. So I want to give you, in short, what pulmonary circulation is in short, and then I'm going to give you the other types of circulation. So the pulmonary circulation, in summary, is this. Um, blood is flowing from the heart. Then it goes to the lungs. All right, and from the lungs, it comes back to the heart. Okay, so I'm going to have heart right here. Come back to the heart again. So this is a summary of um, the... Pulmonary circulation. Remember, the lungs must be involved. Heart, lungs, heart. And then now we have a type of circulation that's, that's called systemic. So in systemic circulation now, remember this word here is the entire system. So systemic circulation is, I'm going to give you in short as well. So here now, blood flow from the heart. It's going to be from heart. And now system is the entire body, so it's going to be heart to body. And then you come back to the heart. Okay? Right. And then you have a next type of circulation. It's called the coronary circulation. So I'm going to call that one here. The coronary um, circulation. And the coronary circulation, which is a very important circulation, is that blood will flow into the heart itself. Because the question is now, why blood flows to the heart? That's the question. Why blood is flowing to the heart? Why the, why the heart needs um, blood? Right? It needs blood because, remember, the heart is also a working muscle, right? And so since it is a working muscle, since it is a working muscle, then therefore it also requires blood so it can carry out um, its function as well. If the heart is not getting any blood, then there will be no oxygen, there will be no glucose going into the heart, and so therefore the heart will not work properly, right? Okay, so coronary, and let's just give you what it is right here. All right, so again, it is the flowing of blood to the muscle of the heart. So blood um, flows to the muscles or to the cells in the muscles of the heart, to the muscle, to the muscles of the heart, okay? Right, and very important for this because the, the, the heart itself requires blood. So it can take in oxygen and glucose in its cells, so it can carry respiration to produce energy, 
so it can carry out its function. Without that, then the heart will not be able to work. All right, question number three. We're halfway there. Now, this one states the diagram represents the human urinary system, right? So this is your human urinary system right here. And then now, um, I'm going to point out something, Steve, before I even go into the question, right? Because th this type of diagram here, I want you to be very careful with the diagrams for the urinary system, right? Or the excretory system. It's very important for you to point this out. Um, the big blood vessels that are going to or from the kidneys, right? It is either the vena cava or the aorta. Just to make a note of that. The ones that go directly to the kidneys, those now are the renal artery and renal vein. All right? So please make a note of that. So I'm going to show you a different diagram that you might see in the exam. And they're going to say renal artery, renal vein. But I want you to know the difference. So in this case, this one is leaving. This one is leaving. So this is a vena cava. So I'm going to label this as the vena cava. Let me just put it right over here. So this is the vena cava. Okay? And the one that is going in is, a, is an artery. So this is the aorta. All right. So we have the aorta, which is this one going down here. As a matter of fact, let me just put some lines there to point out what I'm talking about. So this is the aorta. This is the vena cava. Now, if those two represent vena cava um, and aorta, respectively, right, then what is P? If P is connected to the A artery, that therefore means P is an artery, but it's go to the kidneys directly. So it's going to be renal artery. So this will be the renal artery right now. Okay. All right. So now look at Q. Q connects to the vena cava. So it's going to be the renal vein. Okay. So Q is the renal vein. And then now R is going to be the ureter. All right, and T now will be the kidney. All right, so now we have it. Um, we have all the labelings. All right, and so we can now go to answer a question. All right, a matter of fact, we can even label some more stuff because this here is the urinary bladder. Okay, so let's label them urinary um, bladder. Again, you may need them for a different exam or the exam coming up. And then these small little circles right here are those structures. They are called a spincer muscle. And spincer is a P S I N C T E R. And so they are spincer muscle. Okay. All right. And the spincer muscle will control the release of urine from the bladder itself. And then this tube that leading from the blood is called a urethra. Okay. All right. So those are our labelings. Now, as I promised you, I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm not even going into question yet because I really want to understand this diagram. Now, again, if a diagram is drawn like this, okay? So, I'm going to draw my best to draw the kidney. So, that's the kidney on that side. That's the kidney on this side. And let's say coming down, it is the ureter going down like that. And then the urinary bladder. And then the urethra at the bottom. Now, what I want to point out to you right now, this is what I want to show you. If, let's say, let's put this even to blue right now, right? Let's say the blood vessel that connects like this. And, it's, and you have an arrow going down. No, let's put this one going up. An arrow going up, right? And the next one on this side going down. And a matter of fact, they connect to both sides, but I just want to show you individually based on the direction of the arrow. Now, these now, um, specifically, the one on the left that I'm pointing to right now, this will go in away from the kidneys. So this is our renal vein. Okay, so notice the difference with the first diagram, right? And this one on this side that I'm pointing to right now, it is the renal artery. Again, it will connect to both sides. But uh, what I want to show you that if the blood vessel is directly going to the kidney, then it is renal artery, renal vein. However, this diagram is different. You have the bigger blood vessels, then they branch into the kidneys, which make the bigger ones vena cava and aorta, respectively, as I'm pointing to them. All right? So great. So please make note of that. Because the quest, the diagram sometimes come differently and then you may be confused. All right, so, so from our diagram, we're going to name um, organ um, Q. So again, just by remembering them. So organ Q, there is a kidney. Okay. You can always go back to it. And then um, blood vessel P, that was the renal um, artery. Okay. I could go back to make sure you see that I'm um, renal artery. Yeah. Okay, so renal artery is Q. All right, and um, the P is renal artery. Yep, and Q is renal vein. 
and then R is the ureter. Okay, so Q is the renal vein. All right. And then R is the ureter. And do not mix up the word ureter um, with urethra. Okay, there are different structures. It's so in which body cavity is the urinary system, and this is the abdominal cavity. All right. All right, so that's the abdominal cavity there. All right. All right, so great. And then let's go to the next question here, part of question. It's a completed table showing the excretory organs along with their main waste products. And so here we have excretory system and carbon dioxide. So what takes away carbon dioxide from our body? It is the lungs. Or the skin will take away um, the product, which is urea as well, in the form of sweat. So urea will come out in the skin. And what is making urea here is the liver. All right, and then part D now asks us, name the waste product, name the waste produced by the kidney and one main substance present in it. So the main waste product that's coming from the kidney right here, or the waste product generally is called urine. So the kidneys make urine, and there's a, um, urea is present in urine, okay? So the main reason to, to form urine is to get rid of urea. Question number four. All right, and for question number four, say the diagram shows some of the glands in the endocrine system. All right, and so we have um, P, which is the pituitary glands. Let's label that real quick as we hear. All right, so pituitary uh, gland. Uh, okay, and then we have Q, which is a thyroid gland. All right, so we talked about that already before in a previous paper. And then we have R right here, which is the pancreas. And then we have S, which is the adrenal gland. All right. Just to. All right. And so let's put gland beside thyroid. The thyroid um, gland. Okay, great. And again, remember these glands are ductless glands and they produce hormones. Okay, we have a T right here and this is the female. So this is going to be the ovary. All right, so that's ovary right there. All right, so let's name the glands label P, R, and S. Already we have labeled them, so we don't need to even label them right here. As a matter of fact, there's a type right there, say L, N, and P. So ignore that. Um, we could go back to our diagrams for what P, R, and S are. So P is a pituitary gland, R is a pancreas, and S is the adrenal gland. All right, for part B, is that the glands of the endocrine system produce hormones? What are hormones? And in very short, hormones are chemical messengers, right? So hormones, um, they are chemical messengers, okay? So they are chemical me messengers, all right? And also I want to make a point right here. Um, they are chemical messengers that are produced, that are produced in one part of the body, But have the effect in another part. All right, in another part. So, in other words, what I'm saying right here, right, that hormones are produced in one part of the body but do not take place or effect in that part. They go somewhere else to create the effect. So, so for example, the growth hormone is produced in the pituitary gland. It go all over the body to for the cells to grow, right, um, or to make more cells. All right. This is a similar way. Like estrogen and progesterone, they are made in the ovary, but they go inside the uterus to have their effects. All right, so great. Insulin is produced in the pancreas, but it goes inside the liver to, to decrease the amount of glucose present. All right, and also in the bloodstream to, to carry glucose to the cells of the body. All right, so great. Now, let's look at part two. It's says, how do hormones get from the glands where they are produced to, to the affected cells? And so how they move, they travel in the bloodstream. Okay, so they travel uh, in the bloodstream or travel in the blood, yeah? All right, they travel in the blood. So they go all over the body before they reach their target cells. All right, so part C is a which letter in the diagram points to the gland that produces the hormone which carries out the following function. So regulate blood sugar, that is um, insulin. So insulin is produced by the pancreas. So that is R. So we know our first letter there is R. Okay, let's put it in one time. So this is going to be R right here. 
It said controls the development of the breast of female, and that's the estrogen, and it's produced by the ovary, and ovary is T. I know this is asking for letters. So when you ask for letters, please put letters. You ask for names, please put names. It's to prepare the body for physical action. And so for physical action right here, we're talking about the adrenaline. And adrenaline is produced by the adrenal gland. So that is S. Okay, that is S. Okay, excellent. All right. Now we can jump to the next question right here now, right? And it said D, it said that Mr. Roll has a, has a deficiency disease, which result in him having a swelling in the neck. What is the name of the deficiency disease that causes this symptom? And so this is called goiter. That swelling neck is called goiter. All right. And it said, give the name of the swelling gland in Mr. Roll, uh, Mr. Roll's neck. And so what will be swollen in this Mr. Roll's neck, the gland that swollen is the thyroid gland. Okay, that's the thyroid gland. All right, and that's finished that question. Now let's go to the next question, which is our second to last question. All right, and we're almost there. Now for this one, number five, we said the pie charts show four different foods and some of the nutrients they contain. Use the key given below to help answer the questions. So notice here the shape of water. So what is though is that zigzag shape? And then carbohydrates, some dotted points like some starch grains. And then protein is just plain white. And then fat would be those brick-like looking um, structures, right? All right, so those are just key to help us identify what is what. So we have milk, we have eggs, we have cabbage, we have potato, okay, potatoes. Now, uh, part A of this question is state which pie chart shows the food containing each of the following. And A Part one is saying the most water. So the most water, if you look at the, 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 the percent of the zigzag line, cabbage is much more than milk, yeah? We were expecting to have milk to have more water, but cabbage in this uh, pie chart showing a lot of water in the cabbage, right? So here are going to be cabbage, all right? So again, always do not think about what, what you believe or what you think, right? What is shown, okay? Uh, that's based on, there's a reason why they show you certain diagrams, right? And then now it said the least amount of proteins. Protein is the blank spot, the um, plain spot. So the least amount of proteins must be between potato and cabbage, right? But if you look carefully, the, the potato one is a little bit smaller than the cabbage one, right? So this is going to be the potatoes. Okay, so potatoes. All right. It said the best source of fiber. And the best source of fiber here, well, it's not shown based on the key, all right? Even though the, the um, fiber is the same thing as roughage or cellulose, and plant materials generally have those, especially leafy vegetables and so on, right? So cabbage will be your answer right here again. Um, the best source of fiber is definitely cabbage, all right? You cannot digest cellulose, just to make a note of that, all right? This, this, the other name for fiber is roughage, yeah? All right, for no fat, no fat at all. Let's go to the diagram here, no fat at all which means no brick-like structure that, that are present. And so we see fat in milk. We see fat in the eggs as well. We're not seeing any fat in the cabbage. I'm not seeing any fat also in the potatoes. So it could be any of those two, yeah? Cabbage or potato. So I'll put um, both there. Okay, cabbage and potato. Okay, so cabbage and potato. All right, so great. And then now all four nutrients shown. Let's see which food contains all the four nutrients, which is fat, protein, carbohydrates, and water. And this here looks like milk. Yep, milk is the answer right there. Um, eggs is lacking um, the carbohydrate, right? Mm -hmm. So definitely this answer here is milk. Milk contains all four. Okay, milk. Part B. It said, to keep our bodies healthy, we must eat a balanced diet. What is a balanced diet? And so balanced diet now is a diet. It is a diet. A diet um, containing uh, all the nutrients in their correct amount. Okay? In their correct amount. 
And remember, one person uh, balanced diet may not be the next person balanced diet because it's based on your activities, based on your development, based on your age, and a number of different things affect balanced diet, okay? As right, so a containing in the correct amount or proportion, all right? Correct amount or proportion. All right, so great. So that's what a balanced diet is. Once all the nutrients are there in the correct amount, that is it. Now let's go to part C. So before your body can use the food you eat, it must be digested. So the food must digest first. Is that after digestion takes place, which food nutrient is changed into amino acids? And so proteins form amino acids. So going to be proteins right here. The so proteins form amino acid. Fatty acids and glycerol. This is a giveaway. This is fats. All right. Glucose comes from carbohydrates. So carbohydrates will break down into glucose. Just to make a note of that. And we are at our last question. Wow. All right. Question number six. For question number six, is a diagram represents a process that occurs in the body of a human female. And so we have diagram A all the way to D. And then it said, near the process occurring at B, all right, occurring at B in the diagram and say exactly where it occurs. So I'm going to talk about what is happening at B right here. I'm going to make sure I light something right here. This part of my lighting, notice the head of the sperm is missing and gone into the cell itself. So the process that is taking place there is actually called fertilization. All right, and so where it occurs, fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube. And remember, the fallopian tube is also called the oviduct. So I'm going to say slash oviduct. All right, I say or oviduct. Remember, you can just write one, okay? The oviduct or fallopian tube. And then now we're going to part two. We said define the process named in 1A above. So we define what is fertilization. And so fertilization is the process... There's a process by which the egg and the sperm fuse, all right, fuse together, okay? They fuse together. That's what it is, all right? And just to make a note right here that sperm and egg cells, they are called gametes. I just put right here gametes. So gametes will meet. Once gametes meet and fuse together, that is fertilization, Gametes are also called sex cells. I could put gametes slash sex cell, right? Gametes are sex cell. Just to make sure that you, if you see these words, you know exactly what they mean. Gametes, sex cells, eggs and sperms. All right, great. Now, for the next part of the question is part three. It said, give the name of the term used to describe the new cell formed at D in the diagram. So the new cell formed at D, let's go back to D. So D is after fertilization takes place. So one sperm will enter, the rest will be disintegrated. And so the new cell is formed that is called a zygote. So first, after fertilization, we have a zygote. Then the zygote develops into the embryo. Then the embryo develops into the fetus. And then from the fetus now, after nine months, then you have a child. Okay, so this will be a zygote. And then it's a during sexual intercourse, a woman may become pregnant. How long is a normal pregnancy? And so normal pregnancies average from about 40 weeks or the same thing as approximately nine months. Okay, so nine months. All right, so great. So that is the average um, normal time for a normal pregnancy. And so for part two, we say a woman may give birth to a baby before the normal pregnancy period. What term is used? To describe this early delivery and it's called premature okay so it's a premature um delivery all right so part c is a pregnancy may result in twins being formed explain how our fraternal twins formed remember i talked about this earlier right that identical twins must come from the same egg same sperm right but now in fraternal twins which mean they do not necessarily look alike all right, and um, I want to make sure I point this out, right? Identical twins, identical twins must be the same gender, but fraternal twins, they can be the same gender or they can be different, just to make a note of that. So here now is that um, two different, the two different um, eggs, all right, two different eggs, 
are fertilized. by two different sperm cells. All right, by different sperm cells, okay? All right, so great. All right, great, great. Last part of the question, and we're out of here. All right, and so this one says, state two things that happen during labor. And so during labor, what the one of the major things that happen here is that the, the walls of the uterus contract, Right? And the next thing that happened here is that the amniotic sac will break. And that's why we call it water bag. They say the water bag break. Here, this is the amniotic sac. So the amniotic sac will break and release the amniotic fluid, right? The amniotic sac will break. All right? Um, will break, releasing, and we'll say releasing amniotic fluid. And so this fluid that is coming out, that's say the water bag break. Yeah, that's why they call it water bag. They call it the water bag, right? But it's the amniotic sac. All right? And we're releasing amniotic fluid. All right, so, so great. So those are the two things, right? We are finished. We are done. Again, please, do well in examination. Study well. Um, drink a lot of water. Make sure you take care of yourself and keep healthy. See you in the next review.